Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing one of the best new watches of 2021. Certainly one of the most handsome. From Omega, this is the Speedmaster Chronoscope. The timepiece, 43 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel is a manual wind and thus only 13.2 millimeters thick with a 48.7 millimeter lug to lug span and a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. The timepiece wears well on my wrist of 16 centimeters. Now, at first, I have to admit I was nervous about a 43 millimeter sports watch, but not only is this one relatively short across the wrist, being less than 49 millimeters across, it's also quite flat. It's got a stepped bezel, it's got a domed sapphire, but overall, being a manual wind, it is considerably thinner than any recent Omega chronographs. This is a watch that's designed to wear under a surprising number of cuffs, and I believe you could pull it off on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. Uh, the bracelet is historically inspired. You can see it is a three-link design with large flanking links, a little bit of a taper, an integrated end piece, polished intermediates, the remainder being satin finished with the exception of the outer faces which are polished. We have many removable links fixed by screws and that on both sides of the bracelet you are going to get the right fit. These are many small sizing increments. Again, we have a little bit of vintage inspiration, the design of the clasp. It's a twin trigger release with a thick gauge, single fold deploy in action, and then there is a push button micro slider built in for fine tuning the fit. It doesn't move all that far, but it does give you a little bit of in and out adjustment. Taking a quick look at the case, it's very familiar. Liar style lugs, they bevel inward and they also bevel outward with the outer bevel being polished. It continues from end to end across the case. The mid case is set and finished and we have the well-known and well-established cantilevered outcropping of the Speedmaster bezel. You can see it's polished on its underside and then it is an anodized aluminum tachymeter insert on the top with a base of 450. The watch does feature three scales, count them three, telemeter for gauging distance, pulsometer for gauging rate of pulse, and tachymeter for gauging speed. This is a nice vintage look, but the watch isn't excessively vintage in its appearance. It preserves a lovely historical look with the triple scale, leaf style hands, and a twin register layout. But look a little bit closer and you realize that this is not a plexiglass, it's a domed and cambered sapphire. And this is not a twin register, it's a triple register with coaxial hour and minute chronograph hands over at three o'clock. We have two nicely sunken sub-registers and you can actually see that the cutout is thicker at the center of the dial than it is at the edge. So there's a little bit of a slope of the dial off to its side. It's a beautiful blue on silver print. You can see that there's a little downward step of the minutes and seconds track outboard. We have applique and lovely blued Arabic numerals. And then you can see we have a little bit of a shear guard profile on the side like a moon watch to prevent the pushers and crown from being sheared off by impact. On the back, you see the reason that Omega is able to make this watch, let's see if we can get a little bit closer, able to make this watch thinner, and that is this new manual wind version of the 9900 caliber. You can see it quite well here. It's caliber 9908 twin barrel manual wind doing away with the winding bridge on the rotor. Still a 60 hour power reserve, still has a number of subsidiary setting modes that we get on the automatic version of the movement, including a time zone feature that allows you to set your local hour separately from the rest of the watch. And then of course there is a hacking or stop seconds function. The watch also includes crisp column wheel function selection. So you get a nice sharp report when you press the start stop trigger. And of course, with a vertical clutch, there's no jump to the start of the chronograph seconds hand. And thanks to the vertical clutch, you can leave the chronograph running full time without hazard. It's a robust sports watch architecture. We'll get close again to the best of my ability. You can see that it has a full balance bridge with a free sprung index. Those two features make it quite shock tolerant. And also, it's easier to adjust a free sprung balance more precisely. It beats away at 25,200 vibrations per hour. It has an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, and this watch pivots on 44 joules. It does have a coaxial escapement, which is a direct and indirect contact, tangential contact escapement, 
and that direct and indirect impulse system was invented by George Daniels back in the 70s, implemented by Omega in 1999, and today uh, quite well perfected to make this an extremely accurate watch with long intervals between services. And in fact, the timepiece is a master chronometer, which means not only has it been tested as a fully cased up watch and in six positions, not five for chronometry, but it's also been tested for water resistance, power reserve, shock resistance, and anti-magnetism. And I should mention the watch is 50 meters water resistant. Reach out to TMASO at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this Speedmaster chronoscope in stainless steel.